This kind of hero could only come from the United States. Mel Fisher is a true-to-life treasure hunter who has already chucked up numerous finds, sunken galleons in their treasures, whose worth is estimated in the millions of dollars. Today, he invites us to join him in his monumental search for the Atoka. Only the most sophisticated equipment will be used. Think treasure hunting, and right away you think of the master. His name is Fisher, Mel Fisher, American. He left California for Florida at the end of the 50s and chalked up his first success 14 years later when he brought up treasure from the famous galleon Nuestra Señor de la Toca. The value of his find, somewhere around $170 million. He may be a dreamer, but Mel Fisher is above all the leader of this Mission Impossible, eager to share life and enormous risks with his companions. Even on his days off, Mel is completely preoccupied with the thought of treasures yet to be found. He's like a knight, boldly galloping forward in search of his holy grail. In the 30 years he's been treasure hunting, this fascinating American has perfected his methods of exploration. Over the years, he has designed and patented numerous inventions. When the discussion turns to treasure hunting with his financial partners, money's no object. With a blank check in his hand, he's ready to take the plunge. This Iron Man, who is now in his 60s, is at once a megalomaniac and a successful businessman. Hi, Dick. I just called you up to uh, uh, talk to you more about this hunt we're going on and, uh, and your man uh, that we need to help us uh, find the gold and emeralds and silver. See, uh, what, what kind of uh, uh, treasure are we going after? Well, it's a, a super big bonanza. You probably read about the Atocha. This one is should be about six or seven times bigger. Can you imagine that? D-Day. Flying off from the West Pier, Mel prepares to undertake his third expedition at Fort Pierce, north of Miami. The team is all here and ready to begin equipping nine of the boats. As for Fisher, he's deep in discussion with his mascot, who, like him, has an eye for all that glitters. Oh, my. Oh, boy, you got the queen now. Yeah. You know what's good, don't you? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, you're a pretty good Goldberg. Oh, yeah, you're pretty good at that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think I'll hire this bird. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> there are two ways to find treasure. One is the method of Plato, and the other is the method of Aristotle. Aristotle's method is what they did in here. You find coins on the beach. Then they went offshore, then they found a wreck, and only later did they find out what that wreck was. The method of Plato is first you find out all about a shipwreck, then you go and find it wherever it is. Two different methods, but Mel has used them both. Aujourd'hui, c'est le jour. Today's the day. We're heading out on the biggest treasure expedition in all history of the world. At the back of each boat is what's known as the Mel Boxes, ingenious systems invented by Fisher, which will only be used once they are anchored over their sights. Occasionally helped out by an airplane equipped with a famous blue laser, used to provide an extremely precise picture of the ocean floor. Mel Fisher's flotilla of boats sweeps through the turquoise waters, probing the depths with sonar and ultrasound.
Treasure hunting is no small undertaking. The financial means and the number of man hours required are staggering. It can cost Mel Fisher thousands of dollars each day to pursue his dream. On top of this are the hundreds of hours of historical research needed, which is done by a specialist of Hispanic Florida, Eugene Leon. I think everyone here in the Indian River area knew about Mel Fisher soon after he and his treasure salvers group came from California in 1960 and 61. So in 1969, when I was going to Spain to do uh, dissertation research for a Spanish Florida subject, I talked to Mel before I left and he said, keep your eyes open for anything you might see in Seville about the 1622 ships. 